to the junction to turn left into John Wilson Street. Um, looked to the left, literally five feet away, there was a car, a blue, which was blue Vauxhall, if I'm not mistaken, had, had, had crashed into like a, a signpost. And to the left of the car, up against the wall, there was two guys with this, we now know the victim on the floor. We thought they were like trying to help him. We thought he was involved in, within this crash or some sort. Um, my partner next to me, we got out the car to, to, to see, no, what, sorry, let's get a bit nervous. No, no, we well, take your time, James, because I mean, clearly, um, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing to have witnessed. So don't, don't worry about it. We was wait, like I said, we were waiting to turn out and we see the two guys with the victim, which we now know the victim. What we thought they were helping him. Yeah. But next thing you know, my partner, she let out an almighty scream. Um, we then saw which we, know, we saw clearly two knives, a uh, meat cleaver, and they weren't little small knives. They were like big kitchen knives that used like in a butcher's. They were hacking at this poor guy, literally. I mean, we, we heard from someone that it, someone else described it as a samurai sword now. No, there's, there's, no there's a big, sword there. big difference between that no, and a meat no cleaver. Sword there. We saw the whole incident. They were hacking at this poor guy. We thought they were trying to remove organs or something they were just hacking at him chopping him cutting him and we jumped at my partner jumped out the car to, and shouted i jumped out as well one of the black guys went to the, the crashed car got in the front pulled out a bag he pointed a gun uh we shouted my partner get in the car get in the car he was waving his gun around i then moved the car up the road i then got on the phone to the police 999 yeah. Um, I called the, them. I said, "You need armed response. You need police. You need someone here. These, these two guys are chopping this guy to pieces, literally hacking at something, like it was a bit a piece of meat." These two guys were crazed. They they, they just were not there. They were just animals. They then they dragged the poor guy. He was obviously dead. There's no way a human could take that. What they did to him. They dragged him from the pavement and dumped his body in the middle of the road and just left his body there. They then went back to the path. They're standing there, all with a knife in the hand, waving the gun about. I'm on the phone to the police saying, you need to get them here. Where are they? They took 20 minutes to arrive at the police, the armed response. And were there um, any other police there before the armed response? Police, there, was, there was police at the end of roads. They weren't coming, to, because I think, fair enough, they had a firearm. They... There were we could see police, but there was no police in the vicinity of the arm of these attackers. And what about other members of the public? I mean, was, you were there. How many yeah, other people was, witnessed this? There was there was only a few people at first because we it must have just started to happen because there wasn't many people there. But then traffic started to build up because people were getting out of the cars to shout at them and try to stop them, not try to stop them, but shouting at them to stop and things like that. But they were taking no notice. They were standing there. They I think they were pr pleased, proud of what they were doing. They, when they dumped the body in the road, they, these two black guys, they had the opportunity to hurt other people if they wanted to because there was brave women with the dead guys on the floor. They were, like, basically trying to not protect him but, like, shielding and covering him, like, keep, like, keeping close to him. The attackers with the knives, they were standing over these women. They had, If they had the opportunity to stab somebody else, they would have done that as well. Um, they were walking across the road. People, they, People filming it on their phones, they were, the guy with the gun, the tall guy with the beanie cap on, he, even the bus had pulled up. He was going over to the bus and asking people to take his photo. Well, one, things what, like this. Well, let's get this straight. One of the, one of the attackers was going yeah. over to a bus and asking people to take he, his he photo. He was getting people to take photos of him. He was standing there praised, like, like, take photos of me. This is me. I want to be, like, as if he wants to be on TV or... He's nothing proud of what he'd done to this poor guy. He's, the guy was only looked like he was young. He had a Hell for Heroes T-shirt on. There's rumours going about saying that he was a soldier, um, which we don't know. That's just rumours. But then, after, when um, I was walking up and down with, their, with the gun and the knives, and they, were just, they had opportunities. If they wanted to run off, they had to run off. But they were waiting for something. And it turned out they were waiting for the police to arrive, the armed police, because... As soon as the police come flying around the corner, they the man with the beanie had the tall guy 
he charged at the police uh, response vehicle. A shot was fired by the other guy with the gun. Um, next thing you know, the police jumped out, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a bit hazy, there were six shots fired. Both men went down. Um, and we now know that they, they were dead, dead, dead as well. How old were they? I'd say mid 20s. And, 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 and the victim? Like Sorry? Do you know how old the victim was? I, a, I didn't go, go that close to him, but he was young. I'd say 20, 20, 20, between 20 and 25. He, he, he looked young, poor fella. It's just sad. It's fault to his family. If anyone knows who he is, you know, it's, it's just horrendous to see that in broad daylight at 20 past two in the afternoon. Sure. And, you know, it's just shaking us up. It's. I mean... A terrible thing for anyone to witness. I mean, how, how's, how's your partner bearing up? She's hysterical. She's got a friend come up now. She, I was taking her to work, and she's hysterical. I'm, I'm really worried about her now. She can't see what I saw. Well, I think, James, take your time to recover from this because it's uh, whenever anyone witnesses a major incident like this, it, it obviously can be traumatic. You're, you're clearly probably suffering from a little bit of an aftershock from it. Um, I mean, the, the scene at the, uh, on the street, I mean, was it, was it sort of complete chaos? Were people shouting and shrieking people, at these two guys? People were shouting at them, yep. Um, there, was, there was so many people there that during, I'd say, 10 minutes after the... the we arrived after we saw it happening. About 10 minutes after that, there was a, a good, hefty crowd there. There was quite loads of people there take, filming it and things like that, shouting at them. But they they were taking no notice. They were oblivious to anything. They were just more worried about getting the photos taken, um, walking up and down the road. and they had, they had no intentions of running off or leaving any, or anything. They, to my, in my opinion, they were waiting for the police to arrive to be shot by police. That's, that's the only thing I can think. And... You know, it's just horrendous what they were doing to the guy. It, you know, it's something I mean, like you see in a, like a horror movie. It, ma- it makes you wonder sort of whether it was just they decided to do this and picked on anybody or whether it was completely premeditated or they just planned the whole thing. I mean, it's too early it, to speculate, it, it, I suppose. Like I say, we, we, we didn't obviously see the car crash, but when we pulled up, we saw the car up in the front end of the, the, the signpost. And it looked like pretty bad damage. It ripped the car off. But so we obviously thought we thought that the guy was driving the car. They helped him out, and they was helping him. But when we saw them, it I just can't describe. They were just oh, it's just her. It's digging him, digging it, and digging it, and digging. Horrendous. It was. And I know it's just after four, but the blood, the pool of blood just trickling down the road, down the pipe pavement, pipe just everywhere. And then the, ambu- the air ambulance arrived, uh, landed in... It was just outside a, a, a primary school as well, just outside the primary school. And they come out of school an hour later. They they would have witnessed... They, if it was any later, they would have seen all this. The air ambulance had to land in their school. They tried They tried to save the um, the white guy that was stabbed. But they had, but we asked the police, why are they doing that? They said they have to try still. So that's fair enough. I mean, make as much effort... But then they, then they went over to try to save the black guys, which they obviously there's no way they were getting up from what happened to them. But it's just horrendous what we saw today. And I lived in Woolwich all my life, and it's just gone. It's just a, it's horrendous around here now. Shootings after shootings, stabbings. It's just, I don't know what this world's coming to. Well, the but, shootings and stabbings have increased in the last few years. Yeah, all the time in Woolwich. It, you hear it all the time. What, why is, why is that? Is, is it gang related? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't go uh, hardly go out anymore down there or anything now. Where I've lived here so long, you just you know where to stay clear of now because of what, you, you just get attacked for no reason now on the streets. It's, and it's horrendous. I just could not believe it took 20 minutes for the police to arrive to take these take these two guys down. You know.